I gave up my son for adoption, and I'm glad he's in a better place. My name is Elise, and I got pregnant at the young age of 16. I was living a pretty messed up life. Both my parents at that time were struggling financially and were so full of themselves. There was never really an adult figure in my life to begin with. I was always with my friends, getting drunk and skipping school. And then, I met Ted. Ted was the first man in my life. He was older, way older than me, and made me believe he would take me away from the hell that was my life. He was giving me money to buy the things that I wanted and to help my family. He pampered me with things I never thought I could have. We were together for only five months when I got pregnant with my first child. And then Ted disappeared. I've learned later on that Ted was married with two young children of his own. I was, after all, a hookup gone wrong. I was devastated. My parents hated me for being pregnant at 16. I couldn't blame them. We were struggling and it was not the best time to add another person to our lives. I was given the option to have an abortion or to have my baby adopted. At that time, all I ever wanted was to start a new life with a baby away from the mall, even without the father. I was planning to get a part-time job, ask for help from the welfare groups, and planning to move away to a faraway state. I was certain I could do it, so I did. I moved out of the house early on looking for a job. I was fortunate enough to be an assistant at a local video rental store. I also started renting a room where I could stay. Everything was going smoothly when I met John, my supervisor. This time, John told me up front that he was married. At that point, I didn't care. I needed him to get me through. It was more of a need than love. I needed my job and to keep it, even with me being pregnant and all, John needed to be present in my life. John moved me to a much better apartment and provided for me when he could but he was clear that he didn't want anything to do with our child. Of course, I was completely okay with that. After several months of being John's mistress, his wife suddenly knocked on the door to my little apartment and told me to get away. She found out about me, obviously, and perhaps it was because of our office mates who were talking about us behind our backs. I was already in my third trimester and everybody was suspecting that it was John's child. His wife even threatened to file legal actions against the two of us. It was something I couldn't afford. I didn't really care about what others were saying, but I had to move away because things were getting out of hand. I just needed the money and a place to stay. That was all. John, at the end of it, gave me what I needed to start anew. He was apologetic, but I didn't care. At that point, all I knew was I wasn't ready for motherhood. The responsibility was just too much to handle. I had about a month before I gave birth when I sought help for adoption. An old friend introduced me to a wonderful couple who wanted to adopt a child. They would take care of the baby under one condition. They didn't want the baby to ever know me as the biological mother. I can sense that their intentions were pure, and after all, it was the best thing for my child and me. So I agreed and signed all the arrangements they made. I named my baby Noel, even though I knew the adopted family would change it. My heart, he was Noel. He was beautiful the most beautiful child I had ever seen, but I had to let him go. It was so heartbreaking, but Noel, without him knowing, turned my life around. I went back to my parents after I gave birth and had the baby adopted. We never had a good relationship, but I knew they were sorry for what had happened. If they only guided me a little bit more, if only they had the resources to do so, but at that point, we could only regret. I took another job, this time as a receptionist to a local clinic. There I was able to find decent friends who sincerely cared about me. I began attending our community church with them and they encouraged me to move on past my mistakes and live a good life for my son. I was doing so good at the job and I got promoted and eventually I was head supervisor. I've always wanted to check in on Noel. I knew I signed papers and I was not supposed to, but there was never really a day that I didn't pray for him. After 15 years, my life was stable and I was also able to get a decent apartment for myself. I was helping my parents as well, financially. One morning, I just thought of searching the name of Noelle's adopted mother on Facebook. I saw her immediately on her profile picture with her husband and a handsome young boy who was about 17 by then. 
My heart skipped a beat. I knew that he was Noel. He was healthy and he looked very happy. I sent the mom a lengthy message without expecting a reply. I said I just wanted to know that he was doing good so I knew I made the right decision. The adoptive mom replied and gave me a sense of relief. Both she and her husband were very active church members, helping teenagers who got pregnant at a very young age. It opened their eyes and they started seeing things differently. She had said they named him Brian and he was a very bright and kind boy. He's also helping their community. She was very kind. She asked if I wanted to meet Brian and said that we could come up with an excuse. Of course, I was ecstatic. We arranged for a meetup saying I was an old family friend who happened to be Brian's godmother but I was just staying in town for a while because I lived abroad. Then the day came when I was finally able to meet him and hug him. I said it might be the first and last time we're going to meet. My whole being was complete. I was okay. God, after all, has been so kind to someone like me. I was not perfect and I made a lot of mistakes, but he made them go away and gave me closure. This, for me, was enough. I gave my son up for adoption and I'm so glad he became a part of a beautiful family. I am content just by loving him from afar.